Hi lovelies and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I thought it would be fun to do a little tutorial slash process video today on how I go about drawing with a ballpoint pen. So ballpoint pens are probably one of my favourite go-to mediums just because they're so convenient and super handy to have on you at all times. They're really light, you can just stick them in your bag, you don't have to carry a whole pencil case with you and I just love them for that purpose. They're also extremely versatile, so do go grab a ballpoint pen and come and practice with me. Now, ballpoint pens come in a whole bunch of styles and colours. Now I've got a whole group here, I've got blue ones, I've got purple ones, red ones, and my favourite is probably this Bic one here. It's called the Fine Point, I believe, and it's got this really 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 sharp little point at the end which makes lines draw uh, makes fine lines really easy to do now rollables and ballpoint pens they look very similar uh, but here's how you tell the difference so this here is a ballpoint pen and I'll show you the comparison between a ballpoint pen and a gel pen which is kind of like a rollable pen um, they look the same but they behave slightly differently so I've got my ballpoint pen here and I've also got this pen called a jelly roll they're quite popular quite well known but these are examples of a rollable pen with a gel ink so I'll show you a little bit about how to tell the difference between a rollable and a ballpoint kind of confusing but they are different so rollables they look very similar and they have essentially a metal tip and right in the end you probably can't see it on this camera, but there's a little tiny ball bearing which helps the ink to flow out of the pen. And that's your jelly roll, or your roller ball. Annoyingly, ballpoint pens are pretty much the same. I, what the difference is, is the type of ink that comes out of the pen. So if I use a jelly roll, and I'll draw a little line at the top here. When you draw with it, it can be difficult to vary the line when you apply pressure. At most you'll probably get a thinner line but you won't be able to get anything other than a con kind of consistent ink out of it. So if I just draw a line here, I'm gonna press very lightly. The ink is very wet and you can see it's kind of glossy and it will take a little while to dry. And, you know and no matter how heavy you press, so I'm pressing quite heavy here and I'm gonna press lighter here the only difference is the line weight. That cannot be changed. That can. That's the only change that will happen depending on how, if you apply the pressure quite heavy or whether you apply the pressure quite lightly. Now, with a ballpoint pen, if I draw the same, I'll start by doing just a flat line, applying a very light pressure, and you'll see that sometimes the ink doesn't even come out. But if I press very lightly it can be very faint. And then if I press the pen uh, heavily against the paper, I can get thick ink and heavy dark ink. But if I press lightly, it's much easier to affect how much ink comes out. So I'm pressing very lightly, very little ink is coming in. You can see there's a kind of gradient. So if I press lightly through to more heavy, you can make a much easier kind of gradient into the thicker pen. Well, if I do the same with the um, gel pen, I'll press lightly here and heavy here. All that's different is kind of the line weight. It gets a bit uh, kind of thin here and he uh, thicker here. And that's about the main difference is that the, the gel pen, the ink comes out very wet. So if I put a scribble here and I smudge it, it smudges very easily. Now, if I do the same with the ballpoint, there is a smudge, but it's very faint. It's much, I don't want to say drier ink, but that's kind of the best way to describe it. A gel pen, very wet ink, um, ballpoint, much drier ink. and also, so if I draw a heavy patch here, and that's my ballpoint, and I do the same here with my gel pen. When I tip this, 
you'll see that if you can actually see it but there's almost like a orangey sheen to the ballpoint pen and that's kind of like a metallic a metallic look to it whereas the gel pen is a very consistent color so that's one way to tell the difference as well is if you draw with the ballpoint pen compare it to a gel pen the gel pen will be one consistent color but the ballpoint will have a almost orange metallic -y sheen to it and I think that kind of is consistent with all different colors of ballpoint pen and I'll try it with a purple one just to see whether that is the case so I've got here a ballpoint pen it specifically says ballpoint on it but it's purple ink so I'll apply this purple area here I can see there's a bit of a sheen to it not as much as the black so that might not be necessarily a foolproof way of telling whether it's a ballpoint pen but you can kind of see it on the nib itself there's a kind of metallic sheen to it but that's not always a go-to way of telling so I have here another one another black ballpoint pen it's probably quite, it's a lot easier to tell with the black ones I think so I can see straight from the angle that I'm drawing at and even slightly on the camera that it looks black from one angle but tilt it and it kind of goes coppery so that's a good way to tell whether you've got a ballpoint pen so once you know you've got something that is a ballpoint pen let's have some practice with it so we're going to start by drawing a few boxes i'm going to do one here and we'll draw the next one once we've done with this one so go ahead and draw a box on whatever sketchbook or bit of paper you have and we'll start messing around with our ballpoint pen so starting in the top hand box you can do you can start in any corner actually it doesn't matter but start by applying very light 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 pressure barely touch the paper but just start getting a kind of a hint of the ink down you can apply very lightly and some ink will still come out so here I'm barely touching the paper and you can see that there's very faint 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 amount of ink coming out I'm kind of lightly going back over the box just to add a bit more ink but I'm barely touching the paper with the pen so once you started filling up that top corner with a light layer of ink ever so slightly apply more pressure you can either hold the pen close to the nib or just kind of angle it in slightly you can actually tilt the pen so here I'm applying it very kind of almost parallel to the paper I'm applying the ink out of the side of the nib and then as I get to the middle and I want to apply a slightly more ink I might tip it slightly so that the the ball of the pen is actually touching the paper a bit easier and the ink flows out more easily so I'm applying slightly more pressure and as you can see the ink is coming out ever so slightly darker I'm just going to go back over and make that box there's a, there's a slight fade here but it's hard to tell you don't have to worry about too much about it you're just getting a feel for how the pen feels when you apply less pressure and more pressure and then as I slowly go further into the box what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply even more pressure and have that ink start coming out darker until I get to the end I'm pressing almost I'm pressing quite hard now so you can see that the ink is coming out much darker and the benefit of doing it like this you're all you're doing is getting a feel for how light you can touch the paper while still getting ink out and then just slowly build up that pressure until you've got a kind of gradient across that box so you can keep practicing that motion until you feel more comfortable with it just lightly back and forth that's the only, so this is a good example sometimes you might want to clean the end of the pen so as you can see the nib here has got quite a big blob of ink on it it can get quite sticky and as soon as you press the paper it can kind of come out in this little blob here when you want it to be light and that's kind of you know can kind of feel like it's ruined it but don't worry about it at, at all um, just maybe get into the use of the practice of either wiping the end here but getting a bit of tissue just taking off that glob of ink at the end just lightly apply and get used to going back and forth 
and slowly applying more pressure. And get a feel for how light you can touch the paper whilst also still making uh, making a line. I'm going to just tilt it even more parallel to the paper and I'm just going to press lightly. It comes out kind of, it can come out kind of blotchy and that's fine because if you find something is a bit too blotchy but you still want it to be visible, you want it to be smoother, you can just lightly go back over and apply more ink. But be careful of going back over and over and over and over again. <laughs> Bear in mind, going back over and over again will gradually darken that box, which is something we're going to come on to in a moment. So, go ahead and draw another box. What we're going to do, instead of filling the box with a back and forth zigzag, we're going to apply it in a circular motion. So I'm just drawing lots of little circles and I'm still pressing very lightly. This is one way you can vary the size of the, the circles. If you say want to cover more space, you can just lightly do larger circles. So in this box, what I'm going to get you to do is just do this motion over and over, but try not to overlap too much because we're going to cover that in a second. But you can keep the circles big and round or you can keep them kind of almost, they look like lines, but they're done in a circular motion. So this can create quite an interesting set of layers. You can see where the lines are of the circles I drew. Now what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to do the same motion and kind of go over it again in the areas that you want to be darker. So I'm not even pressing any harder than I was before. But because I've already got one layer down, applying another layer over the top adds a degree of shadow. And essentially you can keep doing this until you have the the darkness of the ink that you want. The benefit of shading in this way is that you can still get a very nice depth, a very nice darkness of the ink without pressing too hard. So I'm barely touching the paper as I was at the beginning but because I'm going over and over and over the same spots with the same kind of motion, it layers down the ink and adds that darkness that I wanted, but it doesn't damage the paper in the same way. So if you've got quite thin paper, which, you know, it can happen, and you don't want to, say, put too much of a dent on it, so you can see, actually, where I've drawn before. Where I press quite heavy you can probably see that it's left a mark on the paper as it's gone through the paper and left a dent and eff effectively it could actually go through to my next paper if I press too hard. So if you want to get dark places on your page but you don't want to accidentally press too hard you can just go over the same spot over and over again so you can see that I've done that here but the only places that have been kind of uh, pressed really hard are my outlines of the box. I've got really dark areas of that box in this corner, but you can't tell. There's no, there's no, um, there's no, 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 none of these trenches when you press too hard on the paper and it kind of goes through to the next page. All I've done is layer up the pen, press really lightly, got the same effect and it hasn't damaged the paper in any way. So that's a good thing to bear in mind that you can get the same level of darkness but just lightly go over and over and over again until you get that that depth without pressing too hard. Cool, so I've got a dark corner here just going over in light circular motions and I'm kind of bringing together that box even though before you could see the layers you can still kind of see them or see the lines of the, um, the circles that I drew you can just go over and lightly kind of make them disappear by adding more layers of pen over the top. 
Cool. So that's just a lovely light circular motion over and over until I get that desired depth and darkness from the ink. Just applying more ink without pre applying too much pressure. Because ultimately you can press really hard but what that can lead to is actually whilst it you know damages the paper itself it can lead to hand strain and you don't want to damage your wrist. So do you know if you've got very if you've got say chronic pain in your hand discomfort in your hand you can still obtain this darkness and all you have to do is layer up and press lightly it takes longer but that's fine we're not in a rush we're just here to enjoy the process so if your hand is painful then pressing lightly is a completely legitimate option to be able to get you to the the um, the goal that you want with the depth and the darkness of the ink I'm barely pressing <laughs> I'm barely pressing I'm still making lines and that's why I love ballpoint pens for that reason so for our last box I'm gonna show you some cross hatching now cross hatching is a pretty common technique no matter what medium you use it's done with pencils pens you know it's done with gel pens it's done with ballpoint pens but we're going to just have a go at cross hatching to get an idea of how the ballpoint pen feels when we use it i'm just going to fill the box i'm going to do it from this angle i'm going to fill the box with lots of lines in the same direction i'm pressing quite lightly because this is my first layer of shade you can do this as quick as you like as slow as you like but bearing in mind that the more control you have by taking it slowly, the more comfort you might feel because you won't be going outside the line so much. And if you if you struggle with that, then just take it more slowly. You don't have to rush anything. Um, obviously, when you get more um, <laughs> splodge, when you get more uh, confident and more comfortable with using it, you can fill the box up quicker. So I'm just doing lots of lines and filling that box up all in the same direction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build up some shadow at the top half of the box. I'm just going to go against that previous direction and apply some lines in the opposite direction. Add up a layer using the crotch hat, cross hatch technique. And all that does is it slightly Add, it slightly fills in the spaces essentially and builds up darkness um, and I'm going to add another layer again but I'm going to go in a different direction again and fill in some more darkness up here so there's many different ways that you can kind of get that effect of shading with a ballpoint pen I think they're incredibly versatile and you can do a lot with them they, I think they have very very much they have a lot of similarities to graphite except they don't erase so that's just one thing to bear in mind when you're using a ballpoint pen so I'm one of these people I love using a ballpoint pen for, for the reason that it doesn't erase it sounds weird but here's why the reason I enjoy it is because it quashes that feeling of needing to be perfect so a lot of us artists experience perfectionism and ultimately perfectionism can actually be quite a that it's not a beneficial thing to have when you're an artist because ultimately it's like a defense mechanism what it does when you want to be perfect it helps you feel and get rid of that feeling of judgment if it's perfect nobody's going to judge you for it and if you continue to be perfect or try to be perfect, it can be very harmful to progress. So drawing with a ballpoint pen, it forces you to get used to making lines, knowing you can't erase it, and what's the worst that's gonna happen? Honestly, if you make a mistake, you can just start again, and that's fine. So do get used to practicing with a ballpoint pen. Be comfortable with the fact that you're not gonna be able to erase it and just enjoy using the pen and see how you can get away with 
you're drawing lightly, drawing heavily and varying that line width just by pressure. So I'm just doing, this is a technique of cross hatching here, but I think it adds just a bit of kind of interest when you're shading. Well, you don't have to be shading, this can be done outside of the illustration. Just kind of cross hatching, drawing short lines and varying the direction and filling that space. A bit of fun, just something to play with and have a go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to apply what we've learned in the practice boxes to an actual drawing. Now I'm going to draw something I'm very comfortable with and that's a horse. I find the beneficial thing to do when you're learning to use a new medium or learning to do different techniques, you don't have to do everything completely from scratch. Like say if you're trying to learn something, apply those techniques to something you're comfortable with. So if you really love drawing people or you love drawing dogs or flowers, when you're learning a new technique, don't draw something completely different because ultimately that might lead to even more stress. And when you've drawn something that you're not happy with, because actually you say you love drawing horses, but all of a sudden you're going to try drawing dogs with this new technique, you may associate the practice of drawing with um, practice using a pen with this dog that you've drawn you've never drawn a dog before so you feel unhappy because you know you've drawn a dog and you're not happy with it uh, and you've drawn with a new in medium and you're not happy with it and ultimately that can lead to a whole bunch of burnout and stress so I encourage people to you know why reinvent the wheel if you are happy with it and you love drawing something but you want to try a different medium out just draw that same thing again it's fine to draw the same thing over and over again because ultimately it's practice and it's all about learning. So I encourage you, I like drawing horses, but you can absolutely apply this technique to anything that you love drawing. Some people are very skilled at using a ballpoint pen and creating these amazing illustrations all with just this humble little, humble little tool really. So go ahead, find something that you're really happy drawing with and come along and practice this technique with me. So I've got my reference. Again, I say it always, if you're learning to draw something and you know, even if you're an expert at drawing something, having a reference is really handy and don't be ashamed to have a reference. Um, the good thing about having a reference in this case, even if you say you're a master at drawing a certain thing, but you want to try shading in a certain way, having a reference, you know, you get all the shadows given to you. If you've got a photo, I've got a photo of a horse here on my computer. And it's got all the shadows placed for me, it's got all the lighting sorted, so I don't even have to think about it, I can just apply the techniques that I've already learned. So I'm just going to start, as I always do, with sketching in the light lines. So, barely pressed at all, and there's a very, very, very faint circle here. As always, I like to start with a circle. And um, this is where the head of the horse is going to be. I'm just going to start with the kind of head, neck, and maybe part of the body, but we'll see how we get on just gonna lightly sketch in the shapes that I need. This is the muzzle here. So this is where this practice comes in really nicely. You've practiced to see how light you can press and still make lines but you don't have to press very heavy and you can just get in a really nice light rough outline. I've got the jaw here got where the eye is going to be and I'm not at all not at all worried about the construction lines the wonderful thing about ballpoint pen is that these construction lines as I apply more layers you know some of them might be visible but most of this is going to disappear because I'm keeping that structure really light really really light even though I'm going over some areas I'm barely touching the paper. So I'm going to bring that neck down here. I'm just going to round off this shape here. Very rough shape. This is where the shoulder will be. He's kind of facing the camera in a way. But you can see these lines are barely visible. Barely visible. But they're just an idea for where the structure is going to be for this horse drawing. So I'm just going to sketch in where the nostril is. I'm going to get an idea for where the mouth is. So the mouth comes in here. 
the lower lip, the chin, and a mandible here. I'll lightly pop in where the jaw is, this big round cheek space. I'm also going to put, there's the opposite eye here, the little ridge. Can't really see it, but I'm just going to pop it in there. The crest of the forehead. And the eye. So where I'm making lines that I'm kind of happier with, I'm almost pressing, I'm pressing ever so slightly more. I'm applying ever so slightly more pressure, but not enough that that line is permanent. I mean, it's permanent because it's in pen, but these lines can be hidden later on. So I've got a basic nose structure, but I'm actually going to just adjust the shape slightly, bring that nose, brid nose ridge in here and then curve it back up again. I'm going to get to the nostril, bring in a little shape here, round that nose off, and bring in that upper lip. Uh, do that nostril here. I'm pretty confident with that nostril shape, so I'm just going to apply a little bit more pressure. Again, using what I've learned in this box. This top box here about line weight and how much pressure you need to apply and just filling in those lines. I'm gonna fill in this kind of nostril shape here, adding a little bit of depth. And then I'm gonna go down to this lower lip here. I'm gonna go into the corner of the mouth, add in kind of where these tendons and muscles and all these lines along the jaw are. And I'll be aware that I'm shading them later. This is essentially the cheek. Well, this is the cheek area, but this is where all the teeth are and they're all hidden by skin and muscle. Bring in here, they've got the kind of ridge there, which is kind of where the eye socket sits. This is the upper kind of cheek area. There's a kind of eyebrow ridge here, a dip here for where the muscle and the um, eye socket is. So at the minute it looks kind of odd because I've just got these very faint lines in, but there's nothing to worry about and it'll look better as we go on. We've got a muscle that comes up around here, a little bit of depth, and then this is the throat. A bit of a ridge here, and then the throat down here, big old muscle. And I'm just going to kind of sketch in ever so slightly where the back neck, is, back of the neck is. There's another ridge of muscle along the kind of dorsal part of the neck that goes here, and ultimately, this is where the mane will come in. So I'm just going to sketch in a few lines. Kind of applying this cross hatchy technique to where the fall of the the main hair is, and then the forelock comes up here again. Just sketching in a few of these lines. Not worried too much about where they fall because I'm just applying very little pressure at the minute. Kind of get a shape for the ear in. Again, very little pressure. So I'm starting to get happier with this kind of shape. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start sketching in the lines I want to keep. I'm happy with the nose ridge, so I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure, maybe even kind of do this motion back and forth. So I'm not pressing, uh, putting too much weight on the, the paper itself, but I'm still getting that dark line like I did here. Pressing very lightly over and over and over to get that line nice and dark. So I'm not pressing very hard at all, but I'm still increasing the darkness of that line here. The nostril itself is very dark in this top corner, so I'm just going to do some circular motion here and bring in some darkness, but I'm pressing a little bit lighter towards the bottom of that nostril, just because it is slightly lighter on my reference photo. Got another nose, another half of the nostril here. 
just put in quite quite uh, darkly. That's even a word, I don't think so. The outside of the nostril. And my reference, I can see that it kind of splits like this and there is some shadow here. So I'm just going to sketch that in. So get an idea for where shade's going to be. I'm fairly happy with the lip shape. So I'm just going to keep going over and over until I've got that darkness that I like. I'm also going to do the lower lip, the kind of chin area here. Again, I'm not pressing very heavy at all. Just kind of going over the same spot and increasing the darkness of that line. Bring in the kind of jaw muscle here, the jaw, the cheek, whatever you call it. Pop in the eye. So I'm not going to give it its pupil or anything yet. I'll go over that in a bit. We're getting a structure for where the eye is. I'm going to pop in the lower lid as well. And also the upper lid. So there's that. Now the forelock itself kind of covers the um, top part of the forehead. I'm just going to lightly sketch it. And this is where my style kind of comes in. I'm not being super realistic. I'm just kind of sketching in where the, the hair falls. And we can shade that in a minute and I'll show you a good technique for shading hair. All I'm doing is filling in the lines with ones that I'm happy with. Okay, the same for the ear. So I'm just going to fill in all these lines. I'll be back with you in a second. So I've got the lines that I'm happy with and I'm going to start applying the shade. So what I like to do when I shade things, I kind of draw an outline for where the area is going to be darker and then I fill it in. Now this is just personal preference and you can do exactly whatever you want when it comes to shading. So looking at my reference, I know there's a bit of shadow through here. This is where the lip is. I'm just going to draw that line in there. So I'm going to apply the sort of light cross hatching. I'm going to draw everything in the same direction for now. I'm just going to fill in that box. It's essentially what this is. So drawing an outline of where the shade is, you're basically making a box like we did here. I also know there's some shadow down here. I'm going to do the same. Fill it in. So I can actually see that this lower lip is also kind of dark. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to apply different direction and then that chin bit becomes darker <coughs> so I'm using this technique to build up the shadow just drawing lines in different directions do the same here I can see that there's a little patch of shadow here I'm just going to fill that in this cross hatching as well cheek itself comes in here. So I'll fill in this area. I can see this little bit darker. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna apply the circular motion here. And I'm gonna so slightly add a bit of depth and shadow there. Also do the same here lightly apply in a circular motion that shadow. Round it off with the pen. 
And I'm going to fill in this space here. Paying attention to my reference. I'm getting an idea for where the shadow lives. Shadow along the ridge of the nose here. I'm just going to draw this light shape in. Again, this is just personal preference. I like to have that outline to my shadows, but I think it adds a bit of character personally. So I'm going to add a little bit of shadow in here. Again, I'm just lightly cross hatching for now. The eye itself is quite a lot of dark shadow here. So I'm just going to draw in my light circular shapes, do the same for the upper lid, and then adding a bit of shadow in here. Lightly applying here, and I'm going to pop in the pupil. Horses have square pupils, so that might help if you've never seen them before. Ever so slightly shade the edges of the eyes. The eyes in this reference photo are quite light, but by bringing in that edge, I kind of make it more circular. And kind of bring in a bit of shade here to add a bit of depth to the eye. Good. The cheek itself, there's not a lot of shadow on it, but I will apply some anyway because there is some. But it's very, very, very light shadow. Very light shadow. So I'm just going to keep it as light as possible. Draw it all in the same direction. So this area is a bit longer, so I'm just going to draw in some more controlled lines here. And fill in this box here with the, the, the lines going in the same direction. Now the eye, the ears. Kind of gets darker towards the inside of the ear, so I'm just applying a bit more pressure, I'm going over it lightly again, to add a bit of depth. The forelock, so you can kind of shade in chunks, do it in the triangle shape of the hair. If you're not used to drawing hair, obviously, it's something worth practicing. But you can do darker shadow at the top, very light in the middle, and then dark at the end again. And what it does, it creates this area of kind of where the light might be hitting. Do the same for this one. Dark at the tip, fade out into a light part in the middle, then light through to dark again at the top there. Dark at the tip, fading into a light line, light to dark. It's a very simple technique for shading hair. I think it's quite effective. Dark at the tip, light in the middle, dark at the tip. Same, just draw some lines like that. Nice. We'll go on to the neck. So there's a lot of shadow on this reference's neck of the reference for, uh, of the horse I've got here. So I'm going to draw quite a dark patch here, which ultimately leads into a part of the throat here that's quite dark. So. I'm going to apply a bit more pressure in my cross hatching. And I see that there's actually a bit of depth, a bit of darkness here. So I'm just going to cross hatch in a different direction and take that up, take that down to a darker shade. Now the rest of the neck, there's a lot of shadow all along the groove of the muscle. So I'm just going to do some cross hatching down here and bring in a portion of shadow that goes like this. I might go from this right here, kind of joins that, those patches of shade together. Okay. 
I'm just building up on what the reference is showing me. I'm not being afraid to layer things up and trying to do things in different directions. It just adds a bit of interest to the, the drawing. There's a patch of shadow here that kind of curves around the edge of this muscle. here, do some light circular motions here, a bit more darkness here in my circular motions, just playing with the different techniques that I have when it comes to using it to shade, just letting the ink flow from the pen whilst applying as little pressure as possible. Just to get... It's easier to build up layers that way if you keep it light on the first layer. Fabulous. So there you have it. One horse face drawn in ballpoint pen. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to get some more, fantastic. I do two tutorials every month for my Patreons. So I'll pop that in the description below if you want to check that out. So far I've got a tutorial on how to draw dog paws, how to draw cat eyes and how to draw the basics of wings. So do check that out if that's something that appeals to you. Now if you like this kind of content let me know in the comments. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. And I can't wait to see you for the next video. So goodbye guys and I'll see you soon.